Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for April 8th, 2020. Yesterday was a very interesting day. Gap up, and then the, the virus numbers really came in to impact uh, the, the psyche of the market, pulling back and wiping out most of those gains in a really schizophrenic market as we're trying to price um, stocks ahead of the next round of earnings. So how about we settle in? Let's see if we can make some sense out of this. Grab yourself something to drink and let's get ready for the hump day, the Wednesday edition of the morning market prep video. So yesterday, we get this big gap up in the morning as everyone's just rushing, apparently, thinking that we're going to just race back higher here in the market, creating a, an awful lot of um, fear of missing out, apparently. And I warned yesterday to be really, really careful about chasing into this, and I hope a lot of you heeded that warning because... Well, obviously, anyone who bought yesterday morning is feeling the pain today and or felt the pain yesterday as we sold off, uh, wiping out those gains, pulling all the way back. So what do we do from here? Well, first, let's take a look at the technicals and see what we've got going on here in the market. Um, if we pull this back, if you guys remember yesterday, I pointed out the possibility of this next resistance level in the chart. And we ran up, poked through that for just a moment in the Dow, and then um, we found those sellers coming in. And it really started to happen when those um, numbers of virus counts really started to um, rise dramatically. Yesterday, New York and New Jersey had their highest death count with another increase in infections, um, putting us at a number this morning over 400,000 infections um, overall, and we're approaching 13,000 deaths um, at the moment. So pretty dismal day on the virus front. Everyone continues to hope that this is going to be short-lived, that we're going to get out of this really quickly. But as we're trying to price these stocks ahead of second quarter earnings, there's just so much uncertainty. We just don't know what these impacts are going to be. If you take a look, um, uh, the analysts, you, you've got Goldman Sachs out there suggesting that we could see earnings uh, decline of 33% in 2020. And that's all of 2020, not just um, this quarter, 33% in 2020, with some of the better estimates, somewhere around 20% declines in 2020. And so everyone's trying to um, come to grips with what this is going to mean. And, and I'm not sure we're going to know because we don't know how long this virus is going to last. We don't know how long uh, these impacts will continue. We don't know when we'll be able to get back to work and things will start to normalize. So many uncertainties out there. What we do know for sure is that unemployment just continues to, to rise. We're hearing um, every day about more and more folks being laid off or um, furloughed. And those impacts to businesses, um, we can expect to be pretty substantial. So uh, dealing with price resistance in the chart, all of this ugliness going on out there, um, it's really understandable that the market is so all over the place as we're trying to come to grips with uh, what this means and how do we price stocks in this environment, in this environment that we've never really been in them before. Now, overnight futures traded off about 150 points. And so far this morning, they're trying to lift up Dow futures up at this moment, about 118 points. They've been up about 140, um, been rallying um, since about, oh, 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning, trying to come back into positive uh, territory. Uh, um, so continue to expect very volatile price action in here. Now, this dark cloud cover right here that we see in this chart would really suggest more pullback in the market is likely. So watch for that possibility. Um, that certainly could be the case. But we have some positiveness here in these charts, and that is that we have a little bit of an uptrend. So if we 
pull back and catch some price support in here we really haven't hurt anything um, if we start to lose these levels however that's where some real pain could come into the market so just keep your eyes on that and watch that closely Let's take a look at the SPY real quickly. SPY did virtually the same thing. Ran up here, slammed in it, and its head into some price resistance. As you can see, we've got these lows and highs in here, creating that price resistance in the chart, and then all of this congestion. Ran up there, banged our head into it, pulled back hard, giving up all of those gains. And this morning, um, SPY is also trying to push a little bit higher here this morning, give us a little bit of lift on that. But keep in mind that that pattern would kind of suggest the possibility that more selling could come into play. Once again, we do have that uptrend that could hold us in here if we do pull back. Let's take a look at the Qs. Very, very similar pattern here in the Qs. Now, the Qs obviously has been the strongest of the indexes, rallying up substantially here. And you can see there's that trend, um, that pretty ugly sell-off when we popped into this resistance level in the chart, and uh, that potential that we could pull back a little bit more if we look at our moving averages on here um, you can see whoops that went to a two day for some reason as you can see we popped into that 200 day moving average and um, broke through it and then uh, pulled back by the close so that 200 day may kind of come into play here serving as some price resistance in the chart Keep in mind the uncertainty moving forward with earnings is just, boy, we just don't know. We just don't know what these numbers could show. And that's what the market is trying to grapple with. It's trying to figure out how do we price these things ahead of um, earnings season kicking off. And uh, we're getting all of this turbulence and price action. And just tremendous uncertainty in this market. If we take a look at IWM, now IWM is the weakest of the indexes. It rallied up and touched last week's highs. That's the best it's been able to do. The other three indexes actually broke out of those highs. Um, IWM just couldn't get that done and hit those highs pulling back. And once again, it's trying to lift just slightly this morning excuse me, trying to lift just slightly this morning. And we are holding this little bit of a trend. So the pullback, there'll be some support maybe right in here um, that can hold it if we do find some sellers um, wanting to follow through pushing to the downside. Let's take a look at the VIX. It's interesting how the VIX in all of these price moves um, and big price swings uh, really isn't moving all of that much. We did rally a little bit yesterday. Um, we still have that potential. We could seek out this 50-day uh, here in the VIX. But it, it's really kind of displaying the uncertainty that uh, we have in this market. We just don't know what comes next. Um, and we're really trying to grapple with that. And we're seeing that just uncertainty um, in this VIX still hanging in there around um, you know over 40 handles pretty rough in the market, technically in a downtrend, but it could also be deemed as technically in a bull flag. So um, where do we go from here is anyone's guess. And if anyone tells you they know exactly where we're going to go from here, they're lying to you. Run. Because the tremendous volatility that we see in this market is is so uncertain the path forward is so uncertain that even the big institutions like goldman and credit suisse are just trying to figure out where do they position themselves as we head into earnings what is this going to mean um, pretty crazy um, pretty crazy market that we are in um, at the moment. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And you can see what happened in T2122. We were clear up here yesterday. We zoomed clear up here. So we went from complete oversold to overbought 
in two, well, in, in a day and a morning gap. And then we pulled it back yesterday. Could we still rally up toward this area? Yes, we certainly could. There's no reason to believe that we can't rally. As a matter of fact, Dow futures are now trying to push higher. We're up at 170. Um, as we head into some of the economic data here today, we'll see how that continues to react. But trying to push on higher here um, may look for a retest of those results resistance levels um, up above. So watch that close. We could push higher. Um, keep in mind that if we do get up in here, the chances of a substantial pullback um, still are in play. And because these market moves are, are not just 50, 60 point moves, we're moving hundreds of points at a time. It's a very, very dangerous market uh, to be messing around and be really, really careful. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for day, today and see what we have going on and as you can see today we're going to get another reading on the petroleum status numbers that obviously can uh, i don't think anyone's probably expecting um, the major supply glut to go away quickly that could have some effect on um, oil sector stocks we'll want to watch that today it could be both positive or negative and then we have the FOMC minutes. Now, one of the things that can typically happen in a normal market, which we are not, is that we just kind of go stagnant as we wait for those FOMC minutes. Um, I'm not sure we're going to learn anything more um, from the FOMC out of these minutes right now because they're also grappling with um, what to do, you know, um, throwing out all kinds of, of money in um different operations so i'm not sure we're going to learn a whole lot there but just note that that could occur and then keep in mind if you're thinking about holding any stocks overnight keep in mind we're going to have a jobless claim number tomorrow morning and a ppi number and then we've got jerome powell speaking so anything is possible uh, by the time the market opens tomorrow with these two numbers uh, those jobless claims are likely to be brutally ugly uh, tomorrow morning so keep that in mind plan your risk very very carefully on the earnings front today we have um, been over 20 companies reporting here this morning but looking through here i can't really find anything that would be uh, particularly uh, notable um, except um, maybe just one uh, PetSmart is reporting this morning looks like wow uh, bid ask spread is extremely wide um, uh, TC2000 and these little triangles here show me bid ask spread um, bid ask spread is extremely wide the the one side here let me go to a longer term chart see if I can even find the other side of this I can't um, it's so wide that um, they're not even registering it here very clearly so um, looking uh, Look, we'll want to keep an eye on this, um, or excuse me, not, I said PetSmart, PriceSmart. Um, this is one of the stocks that may be somewhat notable today, so watch it. Um, but once again, I don't expect these earnings to really move the market around. Everybody's going to be focused on coronavirus impacts, pending um, earnings beginning next week. All of those kind of things are going to be circulating in the mind of the market today. So watch those things carefully. Let's take a look at some stocks that you may want to consider for potential trading. But before we do that, if you guys could do me a favor, if you find these videos to be helpful, if you get some information out of these videos that help you view those technicals and help you figure out how you want to approach the market for the day, if you could just do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you feel the video is worthy, please do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. Helps us continue to grow. Thank you so much for that. I truly, truly appreciate it. So where do we go to find something to trade? Um, it, you know, if you are a very, very quick intraday trader, there are trades to be had. We can, um, we can certainly pick up those 
um, fast movers, you know, things like um, NVIDIA has had a, a, had a really nice rally here um, a day ago. And if we look at the short term charts, over here there was some price moves that might have been tradable by the way this gradient area is overnight price action there may have been some price moves tradable but it's it's so difficult to know what to do here um, in a market that whips so dramatically um, these big swings and we did, we're not talking about you know a normal market if you guys remember it wasn't all that long ago a market moves a hundred points in a day and it uh, was a pretty good day for the market now we're moving five six seven eight hundred a thousand points in these moves very very volatile price action so intraday trading for those who are quick enough to do it can probably make some nice money for those of you who are not feeling so quick on your feet and liking that kind of trading which i am not one of those people that enjoys um um, day trading I look more um, at the swing and the position type trades and one of the things I'm starting to do is I'm starting to pick up some positions in what I consider to be relatively um, simple type trades um, like XLE where I don't have direct exposure to earnings events on individual stocks but I'm starting to nibble in some of these particular areas like um, XLE energy I expect um, two years from now energy prices are going to be higher could there be more downside in this yes so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pick up a bit of a portfolio in in stocks that are moving around now we picked up some here in right way options on XLE in here um, had a really nice upside move um, in that and if I get a pullback or rest in here that holds a trend I will probably add to trades like that and I'm going to be looking to diversify a few things in some longer term holds um, right now just trying to pick up and take advantage of some of these low prices now I do think there is a chance guys that we may not have reached the low here in the market that we could see more downside um, in the days ahead so be careful with over trading and be careful with overconfidence that the market is just going to zoom right back certainly the federal government is doing everything that they they're going to throw everything at this that they possibly can and they will eventually win in getting the market to rally up but as we head into these earnings events and, and we see so many people unemployed and we see the damage that's being created, we had um, mortgage application numbers falling by 18% this morning. Even with these low rates, extremely low, historically low rates, folks aren't out buying houses. And why would they not be buying houses even with low rates? They're uncertain about their jobs. They don't know if they're going to have a job next week or next month. And so um, we're just seeing these impacts continuing to spin. And the uncertainty out there is so palpable. It's, it's hard for everyone to come to grips with it. So just expect those impacts to continue to create shockwaves in the market. However, having said that, there are stocks that are definitely um, showing improvement. And we expect these stocks to stay um, stay around forever you know take a look at coca-cola breaking that downtrend rallying up yesterday pulling back if this can pull back and hold a price support area in here maintain this trend then these are the kind of stocks that we want to look for for those potential swing type positions now they may be really quick swing positions in the in the sense that you have to trade them intraday or um, unable to hold them even for an, uh, one overnight session but trades like that might be a place to look you could also look in stocks like Pfizer and healthcare Pfizer breaking this downtrend as you can see holding 
um, holding in above that downtrend in this uh, bearish engulfing candle yesterday. If that pulls back and finds some price support here in the chart, there may be some opportunities to hang in here on these trends and pick up. So there, there is some silver lining out there in these charts. We're just going to have to be very, very careful. And then, of course, you can always look toward those truly defensive companies. Um, companies like... Um, Walmart. Walmart pushing up here actually for a little bit trying to break out to new record highs. Um, Walmart getting some of the benefit of, of um, this stay at home policy, everybody shopping online and those kind of things and Walmart gaining some benefit in that. But um, please keep in mind this is extremely volatile price action and if you decide to trade in these be very very careful and plan your trades carefully but there are those kind of stocks out there um, that are um, getting some of those benefits now take a look at Costco Costco has been extremely volatile pushing up into this downtrend but if it can hold this major price support in here and bounce off of there there may be some opportunity to start picking up some stocks in in that arena of Costco so look to that consumer defensive type sector um, we might find some uh, some trades in there. Um, UNH is another one of those uh, healthcare providers as we break into these downtrends, lift up and hold some support levels. If we can hang in here, hold on to some of these trends, then we have some opportunities uh, for upside moves. So this is going to be a stock picker's market. There's um, you know, Trends are going to be difficult to find in the indexes themselves with the whip. And I don't want anyone to think that there's not the possibility that we couldn't go back and revisit the lows of the market. Even with all of the stimulus and everything out there, the damage that's being created in these companies could certainly cre create that, that next wave down to test those lows. So just keep that of mind don't bet the farm um, on this market with so much volatility um, with that everyone hey I want to wish you all a great day and I want to encourage everyone to continue to follow the rules out there stay safe protect yourself but not only that protect your neighbors and the, your community members by uh, staying home and and avoiding that um, that contact so that we can do the best job that we that we possibly can in in beating this virus um, just by removing its ability to spread. Everyone take care, stay safe. I want to wish you all of the best. Have a great day and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning.